Welcome to Movie Life Crisis. Join us as we watch the best movies from 30 years ago. They stole $100 million in midair and lost it. Now, to get it back, recognize these locations? They'll make one man a hostage. You're not going after him. That's what I got. And the other, a moving target. Cliffhanger, rated R. Starts Friday at a theater near you. Oh, cliffhanger, rated R. Uh, you were asking me if I about the about the trailer right before we started recording. Dude, I listened to so many of the TV spots to find that one. I listened to four of them that didn't have any words at all. It was just explosions <laughs> and punching sounds. <laughs> oh, man. Get down again! In a uh, world. The name of that audio file is TV Spot 8. Of course it is. That's how deep I had to go. That's Yeah, you got to have a bunch. You got to have a bunch. You got to sell it. If yeah. it's a movie like this, you got to sell it ahead of time, make people want to go see it. Right. Because if, not- if it goes by word of mouth, she ain't making no money. No, no. And it's not compelling <laughs> audio when it's just explosion sounds because you can't see the explosions. You can't see super jacked up Stallone jumping off, off a mountaintop. Right, right. Rest assured, though, that happened. Uh, movie Life Crisis Season 3, Episode 19, <laughs> Cliffhanger. 19. Already. I can't believe we're already here at 19. Somebody was asking if we're going to do anything special for our 100th episode. I was like, oh, shit, that's a good idea. That would probably be coming like early next year, depending on how many yeah. bonus episodes we do. We've done 100 episodes? No, but I think we're like in the, in the like high 70s now. Ooh, nice. And we're, do, but we're doing bonus stuff. We do bonus stuff towards the end of the year. So we're going to do like 30-something yeah. so, this year. So. Yeah, yeah, all that counts, I guess. Yeah, hell yeah, it does. I mean, I won't count Patreon stuff, but on the main feed, we'll eventually we'll hit number 100. We have to figure out, do a little celebration. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with it. That's awesome. I'm trying to think, we'll have, we'll have to think. People should tell us if there's something fun we should do. I, my first idea is a terrible idea, which is that we do it late at night while we're both drinking. <laughs> so how's that different from what I'm doing right now? Except the late at night part. <laughs> you, I just picture you splashing scotch onto your microphone. Oh, hold on a second. I wait. I forgot to say something. No, no, wait. What was? It? All right, dude. Uh, first thing, first Sylvester Stallone movie on the podcast. Yeah, pretty yeah. excited about that. Yeah, uh, we missed Oscar. That's why I uh, figure we. Well, I wouldn't say that I was missing it. I just didn't do it. <laughs> you really wanted to do Oscar in 1991, but we it didn't make yeah. the cut. Yeah, we didn't have enough time. But, no, we started um, late. We started late in 91. This was his comeback to, this is Stallone's comeback to action too, after trying Oscar and stuff like that. Freaking stop or my mom will shoot. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, did, he, play, he was, did that movie with Dolly Parton where he was like a country singer. Rhinestone. Yeah, right. Yes, he's uh, <laughs> And now he's back blowing shit up and punching people and shooting stuff. Yeah. Um, before we get started, quick welcome to our newest Patreon member, Aaron. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Aaron will have When Harry Met Sally out real soon on Patreon. Enjoy what the bonus up, content and thanks for the support. Uh, remember, guys, if you want to support the arts, uh, MovieLifeCrisis.com, five bucks a month gets you all of our Patreon bonus content. We're doing 1989 releases over on Patreon. Yeah, going backwards. I like it backwards yeah we tell, also don't uh, tell all your friends tell your mom and them uh, we don't <laughs> remember to read all the reviews in fact there's about 30 that we didn't read but i did see one this last week that i thought we would share uh five stars this is a really fun podcast about older movies great rapport and very funny keep it coming y'all awesome thanks That's awesome. we'll do yeah occasionally when we get uh reviews that we uh really like Either positive or negative. Please don't leave us negative reviews. Uh, we'll read them on the <laughs> podcast. Please don't leave us negative reviews. It hurts our feelings. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any feelings. Tell us, <laughs> no, no, tell us what you got. Yeah. But yeah, Cliffhanger, why was this movie chosen? Man, I uh, I wanted us to, to have a moment to talk about the point in the early 90s where we made a bunch of movies about rock climbing that were action movies. This is like yeah. the first of that bunch. Yeah. There was a bunch of these, uh, quote, sports movies – like yeah. this, um, uh, I think this ruined rock climbing for a lot of people. Yeah. It ruined rock climbing for me because, you know, I was big into rock climbing before. Were it not for these those movies, you would be a huge rock climber. <laughs> well, you'd be huge and you would be a rock climber. That, that is the end of that sentence right there. <laughs> yeah, dude, I can remember watching this movie and, like, wanting to rock climb. Like, you know, you watch Indiana Jones and you go in the backyard and you dig stuff up. You watch Karate Kid and you jump kick your sister like all of those things 
Yeah. And dude, Indiana Jones never made me want to dig anything up. It just made me want to have a bull whip and a freaking punch Nazis and a fedora. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Dude, I definitely did rock climb in the 90s. Well, and, I, and now occasionally, but indoors where it's air conditioned. But, yeah. um, and I'm sure these movies probably made me think like, dude, look how awesome it is. Like, yeah, uh, it's, he's, he's, he's having a really fun time. And this is before yeah. like the Tom Cruise Mission Impossible rock climbing where John Woo directed him. He's like hanging on a cliff. Backwards. Yeah. Right. But there's definitely, yeah, the, I think the 90s was the first. I, I don't know when With rock climbing started. full of chuck. Yeah, I probably should have, I probably should have researched that. But like this could have been around... Well, people have been climbing rocks for thousands of years, but there was a point in time where it actually became kind of a sport. And I feel like it was yeah, kind yeah. of in this range. Yeah, there, there was uh, this, it was like this one in Vertical Limit are the two that I think of. Is that the uh, one with, that, uh, with Robin? Yeah, it's uh, Shit or Get Off the Pot. What's his name? <laughs> Chris, uh, Chris, Chris O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Then that one uh, I think of all the time is Free Solo, the one that you told me to watch. Yeah, Alex Honnold. Yeah, that was good. I thought about if I had been uh, more prepared for this movie, I would have tried to get a rock climber, like a professional rock climber, to come and tell us how bad the rock climbing was in this movie. Uh, the answer is bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah, if my amateur rock climbing eye, it looks pretty bad. But I wanted someone who actually knows. Because this story for this script was given to uh, Stallone by a rock climber. Right. Like I think a, uh, the actual people doing the rock climbing that are like stunt doubles are doing a good job. But I think the whole idea of it we just kind of cut them off at the pass by going up this hole right here and then they show an angle that's not there like i just i think it didn't work as well as they thought well anytime anytime i saw stallone's face like he's actually doing the climbing he's not good at it at all because he's right. just freaking doing pull-ups basically because he's super jacked and i'm like that's not right. how you rock climb you'd be just, so tired in like 10 just seconds. a crooked face and just pulling himself up muscles right. bulging yeah so yeah and also this movie made 255 million dollars that's the other yeah. reason why we did it it's like did number right. seven on the year did pretty right. good. Yeah. Give us a synopsis. Synopsis. All right. AI gave me a good one here. A uh, cliffhanger is a 1993 action thriller. Uh, the movie follows the story Gabe of Gabe Walker, a skilled mountain climber played by Sylvester Stallone, who becomes embroiled in a high stakes rescue mission in the Rocky mountains. When a heist goes awry, uh, a group of thieves led by John Lithgow's character crashes into the wilderness uh, with stolen money. And Gabe is forced to help them navigate treacherous terrain. Uh, as the tension escalates, Gabe must oh, use shit, his climbing. Ex- yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gabe must use his climbing expertise to outwit the criminals and save the day, resulting in a gripping and suspenseful huh, cliffhanger of a there showdown high in the mountains. Little wordplay <laughs> from the uh, people over at OpenAI. That's a pretty good synopsis. A little long, but uh, on, yeah. I, was tr- I was thinking. I was like, man, this is kind of a complicated because I didn't remember it all that well. And I'm like, I guess yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, the movie where Stallone rock climbs. It's like, yes, yeah. but it's an action movie. It's like, well, what makes an action movie? It's like, I don't know. I don't remember. Die Hard on a Mountain is how they sold it. Yeah, I think I think every movie for like 15 years after Die Hard came out was Die Hard with a something else. Yeah. That's how they made Die all Die Hard in a Hurricane. Yeah. Gale Force, rated R. Die Hard, but with Jean-Claude Van Damme. It's like, all right, done. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. $70 million budget. I can't believe they spend that much money on this movie. But when you see it, you see why there's a bunch of like – huge like action set pieces like freaking exploding helicopters and like yeah. plane crashes like, all that shit's expensive because yeah. they had to use right. like real planes yeah i like it uh that 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 whole stuff was good um not, oh yeah no i like that not, and not the uh, rest of it. 255 million dollars number seven on the year behind a decent proposal and ahead of sleepless in seattle that's 255 was worldwide though right because yeah worldwide just 80 a- Eighty-four million dollar domestic and one hundred and forty million dollar international. Uh, That's two fifty-five total. Yeah, I, had, I I had to dig around a lot for that, but it's actually I got some stuff about the producer Mario uh, Casser because I think it's th- there's a lot of like modern movie DNA in this movie that no one really thinks about. Like the whole like it's really formulaic, but there's an action set piece every fifteen minutes. Like that's how they do every freaking Marvel movie. Right, right. You and like going. it didn't really make any money domestically, but it made a bunch of money internationally. Well shit, that's the modern movie formula. Like that's right. how we do it now. I guess people like Stallone bring in hundred and forty million overseas, yeah. I get well I guess, but it like he made the movies before this. They didn't make any money overseas. I think it's this it's Stallone in an action movie. I think the reason that action movies do so well overseas is because you don't have to worry about any language or culture barriers when you're right. watching. It's like that guy punched that guy and then he shot that guy. I have no right. problem following the plot of this movie. That's all. Yeah, exactly. That's all. It's not like uh, talented Mr. Ripley where you're like, wait, is he gay or is he straight? Whose side is he on? I can't remember. <laughs> Everybody's like, flip flopping. I was you booty blind. That's the problem. 
Yeah. My shit always works sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dude, I was reading about how they almost didn't make it and how they kept getting people to rewrite it. And one guy uh, decided to try to make it uh, Gale Force, which was Die Hard in a Hurricane. <laughs> and then another guy rewrote it and he had like extensive script rewrites and made it an erotic thriller. And they were like, no, that's not what we want. We want Cliffhanger and we want Stallone. Uh, and then that came, it finally got here. So that's good. Well, it's it's strange to me. Like, um, again, we're just at a point where we don't know quite enough about this. But like, this movie is like the other kind of airline thriller heist movies, like uh, what, Executive Decision, Passion Fifty Seven, Executive Decision, Con yeah. Air. Like yeah. a lot of those, I like. I guess maybe this one, the airline wasn't that big a part of it, but <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like it could have been. That was a this, little, this super cool action sequence. Like it could have been a bigger part of it. Just the treasury heist from the air, like from airplane to airplane. That could have been this yeah. whole movie, and I would have been cool with it. I'm I'm very glad too that they showed that the cases were filled with thousand dollar bills. <laughs> I just go into Walmart and give them a thousand dollar bill for a gallon of milk. <laughs> How do you? What do you even do with a thousand dollar bill? Well, they talked about that in the movie. They were like, only this British guy, John Lithgow, who's not British. That was his choice too to do that. I would love to talk to him about that because I was confused. <laughs> Yeah, like he, like he's the he's the guy who can deal with all these thousand dollars. Because they're like, why would they steal this money? You can't. It's it's a case yeah, full of numbered right. sequential thousand dollar bills. Who can steal right. that? And like this guy can because he's British and he was a special forces guy and he's the only person in the world who could do this with this money. Here's a folder with a paper clip of a picture of him. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> all right, uh, that leads us right into awards. I don't think there were any. There was there was no awards. <laughs> no, I couldn't find any at all. Sequel spinoffs, I had nothing there. Yeah, yeah. So wait, in, uh, at the end of this year, they made a novelization of it. First of all, I just want to say that. Also, yep. there was a bunch of really bad video games. Uh, <laughs> you should look up some <laughs> YouTube videos on those. They're hysterical. Uh, and then in 94, they wanted to do Cliffhanger 2, The Dam, and they didn't do that. That was sold as Die Hard on a Dam. Uh, but uh, Sylvester Stallone's been pushing it. And in May of this year, they officially announced it as a sequel. On the 30-year anniversary, and Stallone's going to re-up his Gabe Walker. Right. What's his name? Gabe Walker? Gabe Wad. G- Gabe Wad. Uh, yeah, Gabe- yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's going to do Gabe Walker again, and I'm sure he's going to write it, and it's going to be awesome and filled with a bunch yeah, of quips. Yeah, dude, I saw, <laughs> I saw that they're rebooting this. They're also rebooting uh, – or not rebooting, sorry. They're making a sequel to this. They're also making a sequel to Demolition Man. Stallone has two sequels in production for movies that he released in 1993. Um, I, will ta- I will take a sequel to Demolition Man all I'm day. much more excited for that one. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're going to make another one of these. So no sequel yet, but if you're listening to this in three years, there might be a sequel out. Email in and let us know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when and where you first saw this one? I feel sure I rented this because I didn't. I wouldn't have been able to see it in the theaters. Yeah, but my dad was just like every Friday we'd go to wherever Blockbuster, Alfalfa Video, Albertsons, and I would just rent. If something was exploding, like I was going to rent that one. Yeah, yeah, that's the same for me. I, I knew I wasn't supposed to watch it because it had dirty language back then, and I remember thinking it was awesome and cool, and maybe even try to rock, rock climb. But uh, <laughs> in I Louisiana, all- where the highest <laughs> elevation in the entire state is like three hundred feet. Pretty hard yeah. to rock climb. Yeah, yeah. It didn't uh, teach me as much as I thought about rock climbing, whereas <laughs> Indiana Jones taught me a ton about killing Nazis. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, dude, I don't remember where I saw it, but I remember watching it at home. Yeah, I'm sure it's a VHS for me as well. Um, yeah. And this is this one made so little of an impression on me that I didn't even own it, which is surprising. Yeah, I definitely don't own this one on DVD. And you All know right. how many DVDs I got. Yeah, I think we're both in the four figures for DVDs at our max, at our peak. Yeah, that's ridiculous. What, uh, where'd you rate this? Scale of one to ten, no sevens. Speaking of which, Roger texted me a picture this week of the original Kukos from the Hammond Square Mall. <laughs> where the heck did he find that? <laughs> I think somebody posted it on Facebook like, hey, remember what the Hammond, Mall, Hammond Square Mall used to look like? Here's a bunch of pictures. And I think Roger saw that and texted it to me, but I was like, nice. Oh Kukos. Yeah. Heck yeah. All right. So uh, out of ten shimmy dogs, I give it a four. Yeah. This is the Captain Ron of action movies for me. <laughs> <laughs> I Dude, I couldn't even watch it in one go. I'm not joking. Like, I was just like, I think the dishes need to be washed. I like paused it so I could go do chores. <laughs> That's how much I wasn't enjoying it. I thought maybe like, um, I loved it in 93 or, you know, back then when I watched it. 
I thought it was going to hit me different, but it did not. And yep. uh, just the whole, you know, die hard on a mountain, fucking passenger 57 on a mountain, under siege on a mountain, or under siege is die hard on a boat. Passenger yeah. 57 is die hard on a plane. Speed <laughs> is die hard on a bus. Like all of those, I don't know. It's just, I, I wasn't feeling it. Four out of 10. Yeah. That's most I'm getting it. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't disagree. I, it's, it's not memorable at all. It's, I gave it a five out of 10, I think because, uh, now wow. I'm self conscious that you think that I rate stuff too low, but really that I didn't enjoy it either. <laughs> I'll never watch it again. <laughs> But I was thinking about Why it. Why are you self-conscious? You would give it something lower? You would give it a one like you did freaking Captain Ron? No, I don't. I wouldn't give it that low. It wasn't that bad. But um, It wasn't as bad as Captain Ron. I would put it around where Under Siege was, where like it's real. It, but Under Siege, I actually really liked before I knew how terrible Steven Seagal was. Uh, <laughs> it's not great anymore, but if you can set aside oh, how you feel about Steven Seagal, Under Siege is much more enjoyable than this one, I think. Yes. Under Siege is cliffhanger on a boat. Yes, yeah, I felt, it just it felt it felt really campy to me, really formulaic, um, really like corny. But I think I think part of it because I was thinking about this I was like this movie did this is the seventh biggest movie of the year. It was a big hit. Yeah, and I'm like, well, that's because I think they just, flooded the market with uh, advertisements. Well, TV, TV truck. You could, they always do that with movies, but if it doesn't matter. Like if it's yeah. not good, they don't make the money back. This one like tripled the money, and yeah, then it's some. crazy. Like I think a lot of it is that it just didn't age that well because. Things about this movie that were pretty novel at the time, like plane to plane action sequences, like base jumping, rock climbing, base jumping. Yeah, I can see that. And and freaking Fast and Furious and Mission Impossible and all those movies, like all that shit happens all the time. Right. But when this movie came out, you'd be like, "That was cool. I'd never seen anything like that before." Right. 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 And now I'm like, Jesus, those cases. I can tell they don't have any money in them. They're just freaking flapping around in the breeze. This is terrible. Yeah. So like, I think. I think I would have rated this a lot higher when it first came out. And not only because I was 13, but because I had never seen stuff like this before. And now I've seen it a bunch. So you're saying that this is a trailblazing movie that has changed movies forever. <laughs> I'm <laughs> saying that the action in it at the time was probably pretty freaking awesome. And now it's not. Right. <laughs> yes. And there's nothing else. There's nothing else left to prop the movie up. There's no great characters. There's no great dialogue. There's not, like there's no great plot. It's just... The action was what did it, and the action now we've seen a bunch of times. Right, right, right. But it's, I don't think, like, if you're going, like, here's the history of action movies, I don't think you devote a semester to this one, but you right. might mention it. Like, hey, you know that Tom Cruise Mission Impossible cliff stunt? Cliffhanger, Sylvester Stallone did a similar thing four years earlier. Yeah, except that was actually Tom Cruise hanging onto the side of a mountain, and they showed the face of the stunt guy, like, six times. Yeah. And every time it was in slow motion, I was like, why would they show his face? In slow motion, I can tell it's not Stallone. Well, that's what you do when you go repeat something that someone's already done. You got to improve upon it. And Tom Cruise is always like, "I'll do it. Doesn't matter if I die," which I agree. But like, good for him. <laughs> Why can't we get Steven Seagal to do his own stunts? <laughs> Steven oh, Seagal's like, "Oh, is this scene where I eat donuts? I'll do that one myself. I don't need the stunt double." <laughs> Step back. I got this. <laughs> Proud member of the Gravy Seals. Oh man, meal team Dude. six. I cannot believe that we both rated it under uh, like five and below. That's <laughs> I I I thought about what lower than five because I watched part of it again. I was like, God, it's still like John Lithgow's English accent was weird. Like the yeah, I kept he thinking hammed it up though, huh? He did, and I'm I mean, why wouldn't you? Because that's what Tommy Lee Jones did in Under Siege, yeah. and it works. Like if yeah. you're the villain in one of these corny ass action movies, you may as well turn it to eleven because that's your only I mean, shot. Never go back from eleven. Yeah. Right, um, but I, yeah, I just wasn't. I wasn't loving it. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was confused. I'm okay with five. I would never go up to five. That's too much. But four <laughs> is plenty. <laughs> right on the money. There's tons of people though that are going to hate us for that because I've been talking about it at work, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I love that." Movie. Who are tons of people who are like, "Ah, the movie's my favorite. I watch it every Sunday." Like, no, they would that? just be mad that it's a four. Just like I'm mad at you for giving Captain Ron a one. I mean. If you think that this movie is better than that, I really suggest you go back and rewatch it. Those are most of the people, though. Most of the people are like, yeah, I haven't seen it since I was 15, but it was awesome. That's the Captain Ron crowd. It's like, oh, man, Captain Ron was so fun when I was a teenager. I can't believe you're making fun of us. Like, you should rewatch it now that you know what funny is. Still hysterical. <laughs> Staying clear of the ladder, boss. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Gur, Rillis. Let's do scenes. <laughs> My first scene. Man, I had a hard time with scenes. I was struggling. Ah, uh, no joke. Me too, man. I was, uh, so opening scene I got, Stallone is like, he's like free climbing and like, 
it, the helicopters flying around the Colorado. It's beautiful. This movie's beautifully shot, by the way. Yeah, it is. No, that part's well, very well done. And the and score, the, too. the music was like a little too much for me, but I really liked it. Like, this guy did scored Last of the Mohicans. Yeah, I was going to say, it's the guy from Last of the Mohicans, and I can almost tell that. Like, the... Yeah, yeah. The, the main theme in the beginning where he had, like, the freaking, like, sweeping strings and, like, freaking trumpets, that was awesome. I liked it. Yeah, it totally was. Uh, but yeah, he's Stallone's like free climbing and he's like, he's got a freaking Britney Spears, a uh, Burger King uh, headset where he's talking into yeah. it while he's climbing and his girlfriend's piloting the helicopter. And yeah. And then the, uh, the other girl falls to death and like, he can't catch her. And Jesus, that's the main you thing I remember. a whole bunch there, huh? Well, I'm trying to, <laughs> you were there's, building enough. <laughs> I don't want to, I'm not going to describe in detail all of the dialogue that took place, but like no, that's no. the stuff I remembered from this movie. And that's, yeah. This, that's the opening scene. Like that's before the freaking credits even hit. And I was like, Oh right. shit, that's yeah. was all that I remembered. Now what happens? That chick though, that played, uh, Michelle something, uh, that played the girlfriend. She, dude, she did a great job of acting. And part of it is because she was up there actually doing that between the peaks, like not the close up face shot, but a lot of the mm-hmm. others and not the part that fell down, you know, that dropped a hundred. Yeah. She didn't really die. She didn't fall. <laughs> Not only did she not really die, but she didn't really fall like the uh, <laughs> like the stunt double did. Well, you could tell it's like ninety three CGI, where like they show the top down view of her falling, and you could see it's like she's really falling in a warehouse onto a pad. Right? Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Superimpose the mountain shot. Absolutely. It. Yeah, yeah. No, they that that totally was it. But I'm saying like she was actually out there, yeah, doing the thing. Stallone was uh, scared of heights, so he didn't actually climb on anything. The highest he was up in the whole movie was like a hundred feet. <laughs> and then the the I think the thing I liked the most about that chick is not only did she do all that and did the thing, she was trying to like when they were doing the shot afterwards, she was like, All right, this is what I did here. That's wrong. I wasn't facing that way. I was facing this way. And Stallone t- turned around and told her to shut the fuck up. And she was like, What the hell? So apparently he was a huge jerk to her. Uh and it's she thinks it's because she was able to go up there and he was too chicken to go up there. But he said he had a hand injury. (laughs) (laughs) Freaking hand injury. Get out of here with that. I would also have a hand injury. I am not going up there on a mountain, but (laughs) I don't like heights either. Put me on a ladder, changing a light bulb. I'm out. So I don't, I don't like heights either, but I also um, have rock climbed indoors, obviously where the air conditioning is, but also on mountains. Uh, I just, just freaking petrified the whole time, but then I just climb anyway. But nah, even horrible. watching movies where people are rock climbing, like this one, which is fictional, my hands were getting all sweaty. Like I was like, yeah. oh my God, that was nerve wracking. You know what I don't like more than heights is uh, really tight spaces. Yeah. So like when they were climbing through the thing and he was like, yeah, it's really tight and slippery. I'm like, oh God, I was starting to sweat like really bad. Or like those videos on like Reddit where people are like, they can't even get their arms back yeah. up. And- That's how I felt when I used to ride with you in your Versa. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, then you would love the Prius now because she's <laughs> spacious. Yeah, the Prius is roomy. Yeah, and then so this is the opening scene. This is like basically sets up the main couple characters. And then we time skip like a year from here to when the plot yeah. actually begins. And I was a little confused by that because I thought like they just, they just, there's like one little card that says like eight months later and they're talking in the Treasury Department and then it cuts back to Stallone and he's talking to his, I thought it was his wife, but I guess maybe it's his girlfriend. And she's like, you've been gone for a year. I was like, wait, did we have, did a year already happen? Yeah. It passed by quick. Like it was fast. The, the seasons, the seasons changed in the, in the, in the land. That's how you're supposed to tell. Uh, by the way, the guy who, uh, wrote the um, Brock climber, that's also an author, uh, was saying when he watched that harness break, when she fell, uh, he was like, that would never, that's, this is another world. Like that's, yeah. there's no way that would happen. No, it wouldn't. But if you put people uh, that don't rock climb in that situation, the first thing they're going to say is like, what if it breaks? Yeah. Even the company that makes the harness said, please take our name off of it. Scrub that name from the footage, please. So you don't see that our stuff is breaking in the credits. It even said like, this could never happen to this uh, footage. Please don't do that. So. Yeah. I definitely thought that too. As little as I know about climbing, I was like, that's not how that works. Right. Right. But whatever, it's a movie. The space shuttle dropped him off. Don't worry about it. And he was holding on to her gloved hand. Yeah, I, dude. I mean, if you want to nitpick the climbing, I, I mean, I'm no, I'm like saying, no, I'm saying that part was good. Like, like I was like, oh shit, she's gonna slip. I forgot all this happened. Well, I, um, I, I didn't understand why everyone was like climbing with freaking fingerless weightlifting gloves on. I've never seen anyone do that. Yeah, 
I I'm like, I guess Stallone was like, I'm, I'm going to be at the gym if anyone needs me. I'm like, hold on, we have to shoot this scene. He's like, all right, fine, do it quick. <laughs> Maybe like, he uh, still had like his... Like Calculon. Uh, if anyone needs me, I'll be in my three-story trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do two takes. Amateurs like you do two takes. <laughs> He had, he had his leftover uh, gloves from over the top, the arm wrestling movie. He's yeah, just, just a couple of years those. before this. He probably had a freaking couple barrels of them. Um, all right, what's your next scene? So that, that's my first scene. Uh, my next scene is the uh, plane-to-plane transfer scene that you were yeah. talking about. They would they couldn't insure the guy, the stuntman who was going to do this. Yeah. And uh, the actual director says he doesn't want to have like all this uh, CGI and different camera angles and stuff. He wants it to make look real once, once the authenticity of the whole thing. Uh, so Simon Crane is the guy's name. They paid him a million dollars and he actually went plane to plane on a zip line, 1500 feet in the air, 15,000 feet in the air. 15,000. Yeah, Doesn't matter. You're dead either yeah. way. That's awesome. So he actually did that. That's freaking yeah. bonkers. Well, I was going to say that the, the action in this movie is really, really good. You can tell it's all, like done like you would do action in the nineties. Like they actually freaking blow up a helicopter. They actually zip line out of a yeah. plane. It's bad. Yeah, it's way good. I mean, I started looking it up. I was like, well, does he have to have like an oxygen mask? Like 15,000 feet is pretty high, right? There, there is less oxygen. The biggest problem is it's a uh, minus 90 degrees Fahrenheit going 150 miles an hour at 15,000 feet. I was going to say, you can just like hike to a peak in Colorado. That's 14,000 feet. You don't need any oxygen, right. but it's uh, wicked yeah, cold. It's also going 150 miles an hour. He had to like cover his face and all his hands and no skin could be showing and stuff like that. So he, dude, I thought that whole scene was awesome. And I was like, maybe this movie's going to turn it around. Maybe they're going to do the thing. He presses the button and flips the switch and the whole back of the plane falls off. I was like, I don't think that's a thing, but maybe. And then he <laughs> lets the rope go and connects it to the other plane. And I was like, all right, I've seen that Batman movie where they do this, but like it didn't, it didn't get better. Well, I was trying to figure out like it's as cool as it is. And I think the reason to do it in the movie is because it's yeah, cool. I'm going, if you only need three suitcases, is this really the easiest way to get them? Like to freaking zip line to another plane? Like, why don't you just take them? throw them out of the plane and then jump out with a parachute and then go get it. Right. Them. That's what I was thinking. Like just skip the whole second plane part of the plan, which you ended up not having. Yeah. Anyway I was going to say that's, they, they kind of did that anyway. That's where they ended up. We could have just got rid of Like, I think I just cut this whole second plane part of the plan. Right. Out. Also, how much money was it? A hundred million split yeah. between nine people. Well, he, uh, John Lithgow kept killing them. So there were fewer less, splits, less but yes, splits. I think originally, but there was also less money. Because he was dropping thousand dollar bills the case, the, <laughs> over the avalanche, <laughs> like <laughs> the cases kept disappearing. Stallone kept using them to build snowmen and stuff. Now like we that. can go to the Dolomites in uh, Italy, and now that all the snow's melting in the world, and we can find all of the money that they dropped there. Yes, all those thousand dollar bills printed on fake paper. So that was my second one. Yeah, man, that that I thought about that one because that scene was actually really cool. I was trying to get some different stuff in here, and I don't know why anymore, but um. <laughs> The second one I had is when John Lithgow and Sylvester Stallone meet after the crash. Yeah. Like, so the plane, the plane crashes, the plane that takes all the money. Uh, one guy survives. He shoots the plane through a conveniently located hydraulics panel on one side, <laughs> and then the plane crashes. All the bad guys are on the plane. They call in a fake distress call. Stallone goes to mountain rescue him because that's his job right. with uh, with Yondu, Yondu. Uh, Michael Rooker. And, and then as soon as they get there, John Lithgow goes, joking, we're actually – we're not, we don't, we're not stranded, but we are going to make you help us locate these cases or we're going to kill right. you. It wasn't even that good of a scene, but I couldn't think of anything <laughs> else. I, dude, I was having trouble. And I did like when John Lithgow was hamming yeah, it up. Dude, as, he as much as it was too much a lot of times. There were some times when he, when he hammed it up and I, then I did like yeah. it. Yeah. When he was like, oh, you know, the same stuff that you always have. Socks, suit, a hundred million dollars. I was like, oh God, this is <laughs> not good. But. Uh, there's stuff, something for everyone, I guess. Uh, and this is just not for me. Uh, did you have a last scene? A third scene? My third one was when Stallone beats him to, so Stallone goes to get the first case. Do they have this freaking? what is it? It's like, it's like, uh, asteroid style, uh, graphics. Yeah. Like it's all wireframe and it's like it, but you put a hold it up to your face and it tells you where the cases are. They have locator beacons. They're just flashing red lights. But the weird thing is, is you hold it to your face and the screen is just flat and it's right there. So and like, the screen is a map, so there's no reason to have an eyepiece on it. Right, right, right. It's just like, how can we make this look cool? But anyway, yeah. Stallone goes and gets the first case. Uh, he fakes his own death. He right. causes an avalanche. And yeah. then he goes and beats him to the second case. And then he 
builds that one into a snowman and then he like sets up a the little beeping thing in a snowman's like hand yeah and then he's uh there's the one guy with the night vision goggles who's like shooting at Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. And then Sylvester Stallone jumps on him and they slide down a hill and they slide down a hill for about 10, 15 minutes, I think. Yeah, a long time. And he's like pushing his face into the snow. Yeah, and they're punching each other. And then eventually Stallone knows right where the cliff is and then he catches it with his ice axe and the other guy goes off the edge of the cliff. Yeah. That scene uh, is ludicrous. I also like how uh, the guy with the mustache, Travers maybe? Travers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Travers. in the movie, his name is Travers. Yeah, Travers. He gets mad and punches the snowman. I thought that would have been a great time <laughs> to have a rock inside of that snowman. <laughs> Friggin' just let him punch the rock. Yeah, uh, that scene is, it's a scene. <laughs> it's definitely a scene. Well, just uh, there's a couple things about, like, first of all, the guy w- the guy wearing the night vision, it was like a night vision monocle, you know, yeah. just the one lens. And it was but like then when the, would, super But then when the screen would show it, it was just the regular daylight world, except everything was green tinted. Right. That's not what night vision looked like in not 93. Even I don't even think that's what it looks like now. No, it doesn't. And also the guy was like running around with him. He's like chasing Stallone and shooting. Like your night vision, if you have a monocle, you by definition don't have depth perception. Right. So you can't really run around or you're going to eat shit in the snow. Yeah. But then, but the thing I wanted to say that I did like about the scene is that Stallone in this movie is just supposed to be a really jacked climbing guy. He's not like Rambo. Right. So like when he's sliding down the thing, he's not, he doesn't like, bec- I like that he doesn't become a guy who like knows how to use weapons or knows karate. Right. Like he's just kind of like wailing on him with his elbows and like trying to right. get the gun away from him. Like I like that he, the fighting was like, he this guy doesn't know how to fight. He's just super yeah. jacked. Yeah. He didn't turn into somebody who knew all the moves. Although he did t- later take uh, Leon and like jam him up, like military press him through a freaking stalactite, <laughs> uh, which is ludicrous. That's not on my favorite scenes. Yes, that's also not on my favorite scenes. <laughs> um, it was horrible. <laughs> yes, yes, it has so much more the eagle. Dude, my last scene is the last scene where they're fighting yeah. on the helicopter, and it's connected to <laughs> it's connected to a ladder which is uh, bolted into the rocks. Right. With what what are those guns called that shoot the hooks into the ground? I don't know. Uh that he used to shoot through the water, through the ice, into the guy's chest. I don't know what those are called, but they're like bolted into the side of the rock and he hooks the the winch of the helicopter to the so- top of the ladder and it just dangles there and they're it fighting over the top of it. Uh, a python gun, like python is the thing that holds the, the that holds like goes the into the rock. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's like a real thing or if that's a thing they made up for the movie. <laughs> oh, it says, oh look, it says a uh, fictional device. Nice. It first appeared in James Bond, then in GoldenEye, and then <laughs> Gabe Walker uses one in 1993's Cliffhanger. Oh, that's great that there's not even real. <laughs> that is so great. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is why you don't use movies like this to, to go do the thing. Because I'd be yeah, like, all right, I got the you rope. Gotta, you're going to go to... <laughs> I got the, sh- I got my axe. You're going to go to REI and go like, can you give me one of the guns? You <laughs> Where's know, the, the gun? that shoots the thing into Where's the mountain <laughs> cracks? Like Sylvester Stallone had one. What's remember? it called again? A python gun? A python gun. <laughs> python gun. Well, I'm missing the python gun. I'm looking for that. Uh, maybe the Sherpa has it. I don't know. I'm not, uh, that's why you don't do that. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> the they're fighting on the bottom of a helicopter because the helicopter is now upside down, hanging yeah. from the ladder as it's slowly pulling the python. Out of the wall, yeah. is that right? And it's pulling the ladder down with it, and they're fighting. And again, I I agree with you. He's just literally like taking shots well to away. the face and just hitting him in the kidneys. Uh, and finally, spoiler alert, he makes it, and the helicopter drops to the ground and explodes. But he might be okay. No, no, probably, probably not now. now. <laughs> dude, the crazy thing about that fight is, I was like, dude, John Lithgow stands no chance against Sylvester Stallone. But I'm like, but in the movie. Uh, John Lithgow's a British, you know, secret agent guy, and Sylvester Stallone's just a climber who has really big guns. Yeah. But also, I didn't know this. They're the same age. Both of those guys are 47 in the filming of this movie. Yeah, yeah. They're both the same age, but let me tell you, Lithgow's 6'4", Sylvester Stallone's 5'9". Yeah, but uh, John Lithgow went to Harvard, and uh, and Sylvester Stallone played Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Play, played Rocky. <laughs> in like 11 movies. I think he probably knows how to punch. I, dude, if you're saying you have to take a punch from either Sylvester Stallone or John Lithgow, I'm not thinking that hard about it. Yeah, it's yeah. Gonna no, be I'm not either. Yeah, especially 74 year old Lithgow right now or 70, 77. Whatever. Well, they're both 77. But I I'm know, but 77 year old Stallone's played 11 Rockies. I don't want it. That's 
Right. I don't That's want that. Exactly heat. what I'm. Yeah. Exactly I know. my point. I'm making. I'm, I'm making it with you. I'm with I you. I don't want the smoke. Uh, so dude, yeah. in that that freaking scene, they uh, like they had the quips. I hate the quips. I know Man. you have to have them, but they drive me crazy. Do you though? I don't think you do, but I think you think that you do at this point in time. Man, I, that's. The, the, I like couldn't he, even find Stallone quotes. Frickin', the only thing I have he like is the throws quotes. him inside of the freaking helicopters and like, keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle and like slings him into the vehicle and then the helicopter falls down and of course as soon as it touches the bottom it goes well kablooey yeah <laughs> it does explode right away it's filled with gas and John Lithgow yeah. <laughs> every everything made out of metal uh every f- conveyance in the 90s if it touches something it's gonna explode it's weird too because they only had enough fuel to get to the bottom of the mountain when they were gonna fly out of there or to turn that or to turn the helicopter into a freaking atomic bomb test right yeah it was good uh that was my last scene <laughs> that was uh that was horrible i mean <laughs> what do you, I, I don't know what to say I, mean, I don't know what to say either this I, I dude, I almost said I don't have any scenes or quotes <laughs> or characters. I, dude, I watched I watched the movie a second time to come up with some scenes. Like, yeah, right? that's how I, in the mountains they keep shooting each other. It's I watched can't part of it Stallone. again just for the quotes. I was like, I think there's quotes. He keeps in this taking area. his shirt off even though it's winter time. Like, yeah, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on to quotes. Uh, my first quote is uh, Stallone is burning the money to oh, uh, keep Christ. him warm, him and his girlfriend. And he's like, cost a fortune to heat this place. He's just yeah. throwing stacks of thousand dollar bills into the Literally fire. exactly what I had for the first yeah. quote. It's not funny, but again, to heat this place. slim pickings. Yeah. And also I like how he knows it's corny and he looks at her and she's like, <laughs> got the short hair, like all the nineties chicks do at the time. And she's like, like no, like Lori Petty and uh point break. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. That was my first one. My second one is, when uh, Yandu is uh, finally at the end, and he's you know he saves him, pulls yeah. uh, Sylvester Stallone up after the helicopter full of gas explodes, uh, and then they call him on the radio. The uh, FBI agent calls him on the radio. He yeah. says, "If you're looking for Quail, and try about four thousand feet south of here. He'll be the one wearing a helicopter." Um, <laughs> two things: one, horrible line. Second, <laughs> is uh, if you go down, is that south? Is that how that works? Down. I don't. I, if you if you think that that I'm standing due north of an idiot, <laughs> a million dollars, Mitch, a million dollars. <laughs> a little louder, Phil. I don't think all the crack dealers heard you. That's literally what I thought of. He was like, hey, four thousand feet south of here. I was like, I am standing due east of an idiot. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's great. That, I that was my second quote. <laughs> I heard that one too. I did like uh, that. He'll be the one wearing a helicopter. That's good. Yeah, that's bad. I like to think in my head when they when they say those lines and I'm watching the movie and I'm shaking my head. I'm like, did they when they wrote that? I think that they like if they're writing with this partner, they like got up and high fived. Yeah, that's like they're this very is happy of, when they got that done. That's got to be one of the Sylvester Stallone rewrites where he's like, yeah, I think that's funny, and then everybody else is like, no, it's not, and he takes his shirt off and like, no, it's funny, it's funny, it's like we like it. So that's my second quote. What's your what's your next my second, second quote is uh, from John Lithgow, uh, American John Lithgow. <laughs> He says, kill a few people, you're a murderer. Kill a million, you're a conqueror. conqueror. Go figure. Nice. Uh, I remember that one. I didn't put that one down. That's not the first – he's not the first person to articulate that thought. But right. for this movie, that was a pretty good quote. I think of Eddie Izzard when you say that. You kill 10 yeah. people, they, they, put you in a, they put you in a cell, a, a padded cell, and look at you through a window. You kill a million people, and they're like, hmm, well done. Well done indeed. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well done. Died under house arrest. Nicely Whole done. Pot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a third quote. I don't also have a third quote, so this is perfect. Right. I got nothing. Let's move on to characters. Who's your first character? <laughs> Sylvester Stallone? Question mark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a Dude, I mean, honestly, I, like, yeah. Dude, I, I have Stallone first. Also, I mean, he, he, there, you can't talk about this movie without talking about Stallone. I, I mean, right. his climbing is comically bad, but it's not yeah. a terrible Stallone movie, and it's the only reason why it works is that he's in it. Uh, to be honest, I watch it again. Uh, if I watch it again ever, uh, I watch it again just for the action sequences and I giggle at all the other stuff. Uh, but Stallone makes it bearable. Him and Lithgow, yeah. I think, make it bearable. Yeah, and this is the first Stallone movie we've gotten to do on the podcast, although we got Demolition Man coming up in a couple months, which I freaking can't wait for. Yeah, that's my jam. That I hope that holds up. I mean, one of the biggest action stars ever, definitely of our lifetime. Yeah. He's still making Expendables. There's a new one coming out. 
Yeah, dude, he's about to make another cliffhanger and another Demolition Man. And he's still working. He's had like three resurgences where he was like, that guy was gone, and then he came back. Right. Good for him. And I, I mean, you know, actor, writer, producer of two huge franchises, Rocky and Rambo. Like yeah. I just, and I also, I like that Stallone is not afraid to like put out some real stinkers. Like stop Try my some mom new stuff. Shoot. Rhinestone. Yeah, Rhinestones. Like he's just like, he's de- like even like Tango and Cash. Like I like that movie. That's, yeah. we almost did that this year. Yeah. And also, I, I, his, I thought his acting in this movie was pretty good. Like, I give it three biceps out of five. <laughs> uh, three out of five very biceps. Veiny. Yeah, very, very veiny performance. Veiny biceps. I don't know why you why you rock climb in freaking heavy hiking boots and fingerless weightlifting gloves, but uh, if he hit 47 doing that stuff, I was like, that guy's super jacked. He's got all the good steroids. That's the big. That's the biggest thing I was thinking of when I started trying to recast it, and I looked at like he was forty seven. I was like, "Oh my god, I got to, I got to find somebody forty seven that can still rock climb." I'm sure other forty yeah. seven year olds can do it, but I'm forty five and I'm out. So yeah, well, I can't. I, mean, I can't I think- recast it. Although, if you want to see me, if you want to see me in a tight gray t shirt, all sweaty, I peeled an orange <laughs> an hour ago, and uh, I think a forty seven year old who could rock climb is uh, the Rock. Yes, Johnson. I feel like he's in that age range. Dwayne, Dwayne the Johnson Rock. I don't do know that. if he can rock climb, but I like casting the Rock in a rock climbing movie. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of jokes to be made there. There's a lot of puns that you can make. Absolutely. All right, who's your next character? My second one is John Lithgow, Eric Quaylen. Yeah. Psychopath, British former military intelligence officer. That's why he was able to kick butt, kick some names, and take some ass. Uh, it was supposed to be Christopher Walken, and Lithgow was just going to be like the secondary villain. Uh, yeah, but it was then be like the uh, lieutenant. Yeah, um, but Christopher Walken kick. backed out. So Christopher Walken had the wherewithal to go get me away from this thing. I mean, I can't make fun of it. This thing made two hundred fifty-five million dollars. It's in the top ten for the year. So as much Dude. as it's not fun now, anybody who's associated with this in '93, well done, good for you. Yeah, yeah. They, I'm not saying it's like making fun of Britney Spears. She's laughing all the way to the bank. Well, now that. Somebody gave her control of her money. She's laughing at the bank. I'm yeah, saying like people- the bank and now she can actually get her money out. Right, right. Uh, I'm saying, I, like, dude. Honestly, like I would, uh, I would love to if we could get Sylvester Stallone on the podcast. I'm not saying I'd want to spend a lot of time on cliffhanger, but I yeah. would have to if if it's like you could talk to him as long as you want. I'd be like, cool. I got some cliffhanger questions for him. Nice. Why? I don't. Yeah. Why would be a good one, but I don't know. How did you learn how to rock climb? Who? Where did, did the gloves not. come from? He didn't. That's that's no. that's the answer to that. Yeah, so Lithgow turned it up to 11, never backs it off. He's good. What's not to love no, is about there, Harry I'm trying, Is there an dead? actor that you think is less likely to survive a crash in the mountains than John Lithgow? Every time I look at him, I was like, I feel like he would have already been dead. Um, like He just looks like a highly educated, like very cultured person, which is, he is. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's just good at surviving. I don't know. Yeah, dude, there's uh, there are very few movies he's in that I don't like his performance in. I love John Lithgow. I was looking at his stuff. We haven't done any of his movies. Just we've just have kind of missed what we didn't do the Pelican Brief this year. We didn't do LA Story in ninety one. We almost did. We obviously have not done we'll do Harry and the Hendersons on uh Patreon in a couple of years. But like the next thing of his we're gonna do I, man, I don't even know. Shrek. <laughs> like he just he you know, he's doing we're third rock do through most of the nineties. Yeah. We'll definitely do well, it's two thousand one, but I mean, we'll definitely do it. Yeah. But he's doing Third Rock, so he's not doing a lot of movies in the like later half of the nineties. Who else was on that? Uh French Stewart and jo- And uh Joseph, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Levitt. Yeah. Yeah. The, the assassin. Yeah, my next is uh is Yandu, uh aka Michael Rooker, aka Rowdy from Days of Thunder. <laughs> yes. That's also who I had. He was just in Tombstone. We just did that. Yeah. Uh, dude, he's I feel like Michael Rooker, he's that he's that he's like not a character actor. Like he's not someone who like disappears into roles, but he's always the second or third lead. And I, every time I see him in a movie, I'm like, oh, sweet. I like that guy. Yeah. There's never a time where I'm like, oh, this guy again. Yeah. Like dude, great. Guardians of the Galaxy is great. Tombstone, he's great. Days of Thunder, he's great. This, dude, he's, Walking like, Dead, he was awesome. Walking like, Dead. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's my third also. I, I hate that I didn't pick um, a girl, but there was only two and one of them died. So now there's three. Two of them died. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Because my third is uh, Janine Turner, who's the romantic interest of Sylvester Stallone. I thought it was his wife because he's wearing a wedding ring, but I guess it's his girlfriend. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, she, The character is a little bit damselly in distress for yeah, me. Yeah, Jessie yeah. was her name. But honestly, like, given that it's 1993, not that bad. Like, she pilots the helicopter. She knows how to rock climb. Like, she's out in the wilderness. Yeah, she's doing some stuff. She's making So it could have been way more damselly. 
Yeah. Uh, Janine Turner is is the actor's name. And I thought she was good. She uh she was in like Northern Exposure and stuff like that. Northern Exposure, she had like a pretty it. good like B movie and like T V movie of the week type of career where she worked for a long time, but like never this is her biggest commercial success. Yeah. I still own Lithgow and Rooker, so I missed out on uh Yeah, I didn't I didn't do actress. I didn't do Lithgow. But also uh Janine Turner was um like she's been she lives in she's lived in Texas her whole life. So like she was like a radio host in Dallas. So she's like a political activist. She has a daughter with Jerry Jones Jr. And yes, that's exactly who you think that is. Nice. She has Jerry Jones' granddaughter. That's her daughter. <laughs> but yeah, dude, there's uh, other people in this movie. There's actually it's a pretty deep, pretty deep cast. Like Leon, we talked about, uh yeah. from uh Cool Runnings. He's, and that's, from, yeah, that's next. He's also yeah, he's he's in the Temptations. Like he played uh I was going to say Five Heartbeats, if we'd done that in 91, or uh, Above the Rim, 94. We'll see him in a bunch of movies. He did, uh, yeah, wasn't he um, Ruffin? Uh, from, yeah, he was. Yeah, I remember. And that. The Temptations, like TV movie, but we right. won't do that because it's a TV yeah, no. movie, but the, he was also in the Five Heartbeats. I, I remember the TV movie, though, because I watched it a bunch with Biggin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, that freaking TV movie was awesome. But, like, one of the, like, some of the other, like, um, bit players is uh, Max Perlich, one of the base jumpers. Did you recognize him? Uh, he looked familiar, but I don't know what he's from. He, the, what I remember him from is, uh, Maverick, not Top Gun Maverick, but Maverick with Mel Gibson. Yeah. He's one of the card players. Yeah. But he's like this, he's one of those dudes that's been like in movies from 1989 up to 2022. Like he's got 80 credits on his IMDb page, but he's just been in random yeah. stuff that you probably have seen. But that's where I remember him from. The guy who plays the, um, Travers, what was he? Treasury agent? Is that what he was from the treasury? Or he was FBI. Yeah. No, he was Treasury. I, I, I don't know. Doesn't yeah, matter. one of the two. Uh, he, dude, he's in Rush Hour, and uh, Jake yes. and I just watched Rush Hour, um, God, like three Rush nights Hour's ago. Still freaking so good. Yeah, it is. Um, he's Jake's been quoting it ever since. One little piggy get blood <laughs> off. Everybody tripping. Everybody tripping. Uh, anybody needs me to be working a big case for the FBI? <laughs> you know what you can do with that. You know what you can do with that badge. Jump Shove up your ass. <laughs> All up in your ass. Who said I'm in spinning? So uh, I don't even know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Jake asked, he's like, dude, does he talk this fast all the time? Is he always like this? I was like, exactly like this. It's so good. All the so time. Good. Uh, Caroline Goodall, she's the pilot and the henchwoman that works with John Lithgow. Did you recognize her? I did not. She was uh, Robin Williams' wife and Hook. Oh, snap. That's dusting off a classic. I do, dusting I don't even... off a classic. Season one? Yeah. Movie Life Crisis? One. Hook? Yeah, I didn't know. Her, um, name, her name's uh, Caroline Goodall. Nice. But there's a bunch of people in this movie. It's like, oh, yeah, that guy's from Rush Hour, and that guy's from freaking the Above the Rim, and that's the girl There was from another Hook, guy, and- too, that was from uh, Tommy Boy. Oh, uh, shit, I can't remember. Yeah. I remember him from Tommy Boy. I don't remember his name. Uh, oh, Zach. Here it is, Zach Griner. Who was he in Tommy Boy? Oh, shit, I can't remember. He was uh, He was kind of a jerk. Oh, hell. Ah. Uh, Tommy Boy was, uh, I think he, I can't remember, dude. I remember him being in Tommy Boy, though, I think. This is a great anecdote you got for us. I think <laughs> dude, he was I, in Tommy Boy. I, I had it written down as Tommy Boy because I remembered him in that, but I don't remember what party he was in. Dude, I think he's one of the um, uh, like board members or something that works at the company. At his, yes. At the break company. Uh, or one of the people, one of the foremen or something like that. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. matter, I'm deleting this out. <laughs> um, yeah, I just remembered him from Tommy Boy, that's all. <laughs> I didn't write. I didn't go into deep detail. I just said, "Oh yeah, I remember him from Tommy Boy." Yeah, I like that he came on screen. And you just you just typed in your notes, "Tommy Boy?" question mark And I then went on the air live with that bit. <laughs> no, dude, I said hey, this guy's in Tommy Boy, and also I wrote his name. I looked up his name, Zach Greiner. <laughs> but if I tell you, like, oh yeah, his name was Ralph and Tommy Boy, that doesn't fucking help us. No, no. But if I if you tell me like who he played, then that. That helps. Not me, because I can look at his picture, but people right. are listening in their cars. Yeah, I can't like, remember. Oh, right. The guy at the factory. He's also in Twister. He's the he's one of the bad guys in Twister. Oh, God. I can't wait to do Twister. I love yeah. that movie. That's uh, Die Hard in a Tornado. <laughs> <laughs> with with cows. With cows. And with Carrie Elwes. Uh, writer, director, actors, bonus stuff. So Rennie Harlan is the director. Yeah. And uh, he did stuff like uh, Die Hard 2. He's a really good action director, like especially kind of like- Big time. Not- Terminator 2 action, but like a step below, like that kind of, uh, that I think, level action. I think better than certain, like the way he does action, like, um, Long Kiss Goodnight and, uh, 12 Rounds. Those, I like those kind of movies, man. I think I was gonna say, he's done some, some, um, 
some movies that I really like. Long Kiss Goodnight, obviously. Well, he was married to Gina Davis during this movie and up through 98. So when they do Long Kiss, Kiss Goodnight, he's married to her. Oh, nice. He does Blast from the Past. Did you know that? Blast from the Past. Amazing. Yeah, great movie. Deep Blue Sea. Yep. Yep. Yeah, he's got some good stuff on there. 12 Rounds. Yeah, I like that movie. Um, yeah, and he did Die Hard 2. So yeah, that's this is yeah. just like Die Hard. Except yes. on a mountain. Except on a mountain. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this guy's got some good stuff. I liked it. He's got some good stuff. I also wrote some stuff down about, about the producer because I think it's really – there's some interesting stuff about the producer, Mario yeah. Kasser. Yeah. So he's the executive producer and he's like – he's a really big producer in the 80s and 90s. He produced a lot of Stallone's movies. Rambo's. Um, but it's but he's an interesting guy. He, like he's a, he's a Lebanese, I think, immigrant. Nice. But he – one of the – one of Kasser's first big movies that his production company did was Rambo – he and his partner paid three hundred eighty-three thousand dollars for the rights to the novel, and then overpaid Sylvester Stallone to play the lead role because they knew if they got Stallone attached, they could get it financed. Nice. But beyond like being a really great action movie producer, I think that he was one of the first people to really figure out how much money you could make overseas. So I like I'm looking at I looked at Stallone's action movies. We talked about this one did eighty four million dollars domestic on a seventy million dollar budget, that's not great. That's right. not profitable. But internationally did another hundred and forty million total two fifty five. Yeah. Like that's huge. But yeah, the, like and we talked about like that's we see that now. Since the early two thousands and the D V D market collapsed, like the studios lost a huge revenue stream and they've replaced it with mainly international box office. So that's the one of the reasons why we only see stuff in theaters that's either superheroes, sequels or something where there's pre existing IP. Yeah. It's because it needs to have a built in audience here. Right. And it needs to have something that will play internationally. It's like, it can't be complicated. It can't right. be like, they don't make black swan anymore. Cause it's freaking too complicated. Right. People are confused by that. If it's like, if you're in, you know, if you're, if it's subtitled in Burmese, you're like, what the hell's going on here? But if right. it's just shit blowing up, everyone yeah. is tracking Everybody who knows. the good guys are yeah, and who yeah. the not good guys are. Right. Right. right so right. this guy's kind of way ahead of the curve there. Yeah. And if you look at his like story and his like productions, dude, this guy did a lot of stuff. Yeah. I was going to say, I was looking at it right now. Rambo, uh, first blood, first blood part two, Rambo three. Yeah. Dude, freaking T2, like did all kinds Total of stuff. Total recall. Um, yeah. LA story, the doors, basic instinct, yeah. universal soldier. Whew, that was bad. Yeah. That's what I'm saying though. Same thing. It's like, yeah. it doesn't cost a lot of money to make. It yeah. breaks even here and then it makes a bunch of money overseas. It's like, Showgirls. Hey, um, it's not, it's, it's yeah. not explosions or aliens or it's just breasts. But everyone understands. <laughs> yeah. It's just, 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 just boobs. It's like, we get it. We, we, we get that. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool that he's uh, he's the guy. So, but like, that's one of those things. If I see his name on the credits, I saw when this movie started. I saw on the credits. I was like, ooh, I'm like, I know that guy did a bunch of stuff. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go look it up again. Yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, did you see the guy who wrote this also uh, did the script for Hulk, uh, Punisher, Fantastic Four, and Goldeneye? I could see that. Those are all of the same uh, feel to me. The screen, the screenwriter with Sylvester Stallone, Michael France. France, right. Yeah, so the story they had a there was like a story by credit for a climber that had written a short story that I think actually worked with Stallone. Oh, John premise Long. by John Long, who's yeah. a rock climber and an author, and then screenplay by Michael France and Sylvester Stallone. Right. So there's kind of a bunch of people involved in the creation of this, including Stallone. I was going to say apparently Michael France wrote one of the things, and then Stallone came in and said like, "I want to say, it cost a fortune to heat this place." <laughs> we got to put in some quips. My fans expect it. Yeah, let me tell you, I'm good at comedy. Have you seen Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's do worst worst scenes. Yeah, yeah. So real fast, the I never knew or thought to do this until you started doing it when we started this podcast. Is taking stuff out that didn't need to be there, and yeah. the snowboarders were definitely did not need to be there. No, they didn't. It's funny. I was thinking about that when I was thinking about this movie. I'm like, I so far I don't think I've ever said when we've watched a movie that, that I would put something in. I'm only ever taking stuff out. Right. Yeah. I make never. It I never see a movie where I'm like, you know, what we should do. We should add 20 minutes of this. <laughs> you know what they need? Gratuitous sex scene. <laughs> I hate that in action, man. I, when they do. Yeah, that. we can definitely uh, we can definitely delete the snowboarders that subplot. Do you think they did that though? Because like uh, extreme sports in the early 90s were a thing, and like. Yeah, dude, I kind of think they're just trying to like, they're just trying to go like, can we get some base jumping in this movie? And just like, it's another thing we can put in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. They had like the perfect clothes. They were like, looked like they were wearing the equivalent of jams, but for snowboarding. They were dressed like they were sponsored by Mountain Dew. Yeah, they were dressed like they were Mountain Dew. (laughs) Because we were in the days before Red Bull. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. 
Yes, yeah, dude, that's the only thing I had. I mean, like we talked about a lot of the effects that we didn't like and yeah, uh, old tech alert other than the fake gun the tracking shoot, device, the gun that shoots into the rocks. What's <laughs> the it called? Gun. Python gun. Uh, other than that, uh, dude, I, I didn't have any. And did you f- see any political incorrectness? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't really either. No, I didn't. But the only other stuff I had is it wasn't like scenes or characters, but it was just like, I don't know. I was confused about the time skip of a year. And like, I guess he just left his girlfriend for a year and then just came back a year later to get his stuff out of the house. That was kind of weird to me. Yeah, it was. But he was in Colorado working. He was working. He was in Denver working and not in Colorado where the movie was. So I don't, he wasn't that far away. Right. That's what I'm saying. Colorado. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, I already talked about, I don't know why everyone's climbing with fingerless weightlifting gloves. I've never seen that. (laughs) But the one that I really had a question on is like they premiered this movie in May at the Cannes Film Festival. What dude, the hell were they thinking? Dude, that's what they said about the second one. That when I was reading about them making a sequel and they were like, yeah, yeah, it's going to have a new ensemble cast, uh, multiple production companies involved, and we're really going to make a splash at the Cannes Film Festival. <laughs> I was like, what? I, I mean, I've never been to the Cannes Film Festival um, when Patreon really takes off, maybe we'll put that on our calendar. Yeah. But I thought that was where you did like uh, foreign films and freaking documentaries and like The Pianist and not like, <laughs> have you guys seen Cliffhanger 2? It's coming yeah. to Cannes. Yeah. Like the, shit's going to blow up extra, extra hard. I always picture the Cannes Film Festival as the movies they show on the free HBO weekend. Like the movies that are really good that try to get people. And then once they subscribe, then you show them Cliffhanger and Police Academy. Oh, 6. see, I didn't think they were doing really good movies. I just thought they were doing artsy movies. I thought you had to like you wear like an ascot and a monocle and you go see movies. <laughs> uh yeah, I don't know. I have never been to Cannes Film Festival. Yeah, again, support the arts on Patreon. Maybe we'll go to Cannes at some yeah, point. Yeah, we'll let, we'll let you, let know, you know exactly what it is. <laughs> we're coming to you live from Cannes looking at Cliffhanger 2. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have any uh political incorrectness or old tech. Well, yeah. let's do five questions. Is it okay for kids? Uh, dude, there was, there was a lot of language and some pretty gratuitous violence. I said uh, 13 or 14. Yeah, it was pretty it was pretty bloody. No sex. I don't care about language, but it was definitely pretty bloody. Yeah, it was. Would this movie get made if it were pitched now? Well, yeah, obviously they're going to no. do yeah. another one. Cans. Maybe a movie or a TV show. Yeah, another movie. I'm going to open it cans. Can 2025. <laughs> Who plays the lead again? Stallone is going to play the lead. Yeah, yeah. But it's if tough because they're going to they're going to do a sequel, so it's hard to answer these questions. Right, right. What uh, if, I'm, I'm staying with Dwayne the Rock Climbing Johnson. Rock Climbing Johnson. That's what I was going to ask if you're going to stick with that. I want so my remake. I want Tom Hardy doing the doing the uh, S- Stallone, and I want uh, Ryan Reynolds playing Hal Tucker. Nice. Uh, and John Bernthal playing Travers. I yeah. like that guy. Yeah. Well, you know, John Cena is almost the right age going by your rules where everyone has to be the exact same age. And he's also super (laughs) jacked, so he would look like... Yeah, and he really likes uh, going in the snow with his jean shorts on and a (laughs) t-shirt. And saying quips. I like John Cena fine. I just can't believe he wears jean shorts as often as he does. (laughs) Who does that? I like him. I don't care at all about him wearing jean shorts. That's. I think that's funny. I assume every... I assume everyone wearing jean shorts is doing it as a joke. I don't think anyone is doing it because they really like him or they think it looks awesome. Uh, he's like, well, I, I wore him that one time and everybody likes it. I guess I got to do it every time now. <laughs> he's wearing the short sleeve Canadian tuxedo. Yeah, it's fine with me. Oh, man. I I don't even own jean shorts. Do you? <laughs> no, I, I don't. Okay. Just wondering. I do not. Can you still watch and enjoy this movie in 2023? Uh, I think that's gonna be a no for me, dog. Yeah, that's that's also a hard pass on me, I, dude. I again, if Jake's like, "Oh, I'm into Stallone movies. I wanted to try to watch them all. Would you sit down and watch Cliffhanger with me?" Sure, I'll sit down and watch it with him. <laughs> will you sit down and watch uh, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot and Rhinestone? No, I deleted those off of Plex already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, the action is pretty cool. The rest of it's is super corny. But if you're yeah. trying to figure out what Jeff and I are talking about or why did this thing make $255 million, it's on Netflix. Yeah, you should definitely check it out if you think you might like it. But I don't yeah. think you will like it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what? They need to make a uh, – you know how the movies are uh, formatted for the TV screen and they take yeah. stuff out of it? They could yeah. take so much out of this and make it a nice one-hour TV movie on TBS with just explosions and stalactite stabbing. That's hard to say, stalactite stabbing. Look, I, I'm saying like they could leave all of the action stuff and take the other stuff out. I bet they could tighten this up pretty pretty close. 
Yeah, I feel like I was trying to think about it, but it, like the main plot where it's the airplane heist and then also the mountain rescue, I'm like, I can't, That's that part drags, but I don't know what to take out. Maybe there's two cases instead of three. I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe I get rid of the fir- the intro and I do that as like a flashback. I get rid yeah. of the snowboarders. Like it's- No it's, snowboarders. Because like, this thing's 113 minutes. It's almost two hours. That's yeah. uh, too long. We yeah. can get 20 minutes out of this thing. I was going to say 84 minutes. That's my, that's my target for, right, for a movie like this. Yeah. Yeah, I will say, speaking of Netflix, I, I watch this on Netflix, and now when I go on one of the big sites like Netflix, maybe it's just because this is what I watch, but I'll see like, hey, here's a bunch of movies that we have on Netflix. I'm like, dude, we've done like six of those on the podcast. I'm, like, I'm so happy when I see podcast yeah. movies. When yeah, I yeah. open up one of the streaming sites, I'm like, ah, that was great memories. Yeah. When when I hear the kids talk about certain movies, they're like, Mr. Horn, you ever see Dazed and Confused? I was like, I can tell you how much I've seen it. Let me give you this podcast. So. Uh, I, I like when they talk about stuff we've already done. Yep. Agreed. All right. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. Yeah. Thanks. Next episode. Cool, cool runnings. runnings, man. Cool runnings. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen this. I can't wait to watch it. I have watched this in the last year. Really? Yeah. Dude, I love this movie. I, I watched it a ton when I was a kid, so it's got a lot, ton of nostalgia for me. I don't even remember what it's rated. Can I watch that with the kids? Yeah. Probably. You definitely can. It's yeah. it's on, it's on Disney plus. Nice. Yeah. Any, anything else about cliffhanger? No, no, I think we're good there. <laughs> we got we have a lot of new listeners, which is awesome. So uh, if you're enjoying what we're doing, please feel free to leave us a rating. We might read it on the podcast. Please be nice, uh, yeah. or share it with your friends because word of mouth is how we grow. We're not big enough to like uh, pay Advertise. for any advertisement. So right. if you like what we're doing, uh, please please share the word. Feel free to join us on Patreon Tell and all Discord. Your friends. Yeah, I right, will see Patreon folks with uh, Harry Met Sally probably in the next week if we yeah. get our shit great, together. Great movie, I like that. I like that we were doing that one. I'm glad yeah, we're going backwards, dude. That's such a that was such a good idea. What, I know. I'm, I'm loving whoever came backwards. up with that. One of us, and it was a good idea. Yes, you can have it. All right, bye, Candios. Bye, Candios. Thanks for listening to Movie Life Crisis. Please subscribe, rate, and review. And remember, don't drive angry.